actually nice to encrypt your data, as you may probably know, and it's even nicer if you can store it online, but the only drawback is that, you, that the cloud storage provider actually can't do search operations on the encrypted data. The next talk actually presents some solutions to this problem. Tobias Müller and Christian Forlo present different appro approaches how others can search through encrypted data without actually knowing the, uh, the key nor the plain text. So please welcome warmly Christian Forlo and Tobias Müller. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. And thanks uh, for being here at day four after like uh, these many parties and having partied hard. And I'm surprised to see so many people here. And by that, I mean I'm surprised that I can actually see so many people after yesterday's night. <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad that I've made it uh, up here uh, in this very morning. Uh, it's correct. Uh, we are concerned with the problem of encrypting data in such a way that you can still uh, search over the ciphertext. And over the course of this uh, talk, we will present some, well, schemes or solution to that problem, which will hopefully inspire, inspire you to, uh, well, firstly, demand these services from your, say, cloud provider. And secondly, if you're inclined to, uh, to do the programming, then to uh, hack on these schemes and implement them and make them practical. So I'm Toby, this is Christian. And over the course of the next 45 minutes, uh, well, we'll talk about this and hopefully we'll We'll leave some room for Q&A. We also intend to, before I forget that, we intend to hang around at the bar just outside this lecture hall uh, after this talk uh, in case you, you know, want to chat about these uh, techniques or encryption or just buy us a beer. Well, maybe not at 12, but later. So um, this is our agenda. We want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, how we see the current uh, world or the world around the cloud is organized and where your position as the customer is in that architecture. Then, pre then we present a couple of schemes which allow you to, well, perform searching over, well, your ciphertext, which you have uploaded to the cloud, and uh, then we'll, we'll wrap up. So let's uh, talk a little bit about the cloud. So uh, let me ask you, how many of you use uh, the cloud, any external third-party provider to upload, well, data, whatever it is. That's uh, many. It's probably the majority. And uh, that's uh, how we actually imagine this world right now to be, uh, that many people use external third-party services to upload, to hold their data, yeah, well, for the customers to uh, avail of these data, well, at any point in time with any device they have. So I, for myself, I've, uh, I've went with Stan, right? Trustworthy guy. I can upload my data. My the first uh, couple of gigabytes are for free. And he promises me, well, uh, so, uh, he promises me that I can, at any point in time, download and access my data. And well, there's many of those, right? Must not be him. There's uh, many companies offering cloud services. And uh, they not only allow you to store your files, uh, you can also upload your contacts or your calendars, your messages, your files. And um, all of them probably promise you that they will not be you know, malicious or do not go through your data and run analyses or even sell your user profile. Except, well, a couple of providers actually do so, and they do tell you straight in your face that they will mine your data to present you, for example, uh, better ads, right? So uh, they go through your email, they look at your keywords, and they will determine what ads uh, might be best for you, what you, know, what you are most inclined to click at. So anyway, uh, you can say, well, I'm paying money, right? I'm, I'm using this premium provider for my email, my calendars, my, uh, my data. So they have, uh, their incentive to cheat on me is not that big. Well, you might be right, except you know, if they could make an extra profit, they might possibly do so. And also, we don't, we are being crypto cryptographers, we don't necessarily want the, the guarantee that they don't look through your data on a piece of paper, we want to have, well, a rather mathematical, say, guarantee or proof, or we want, uh, we want the provider to not be actually able, technically, to go through your data, not only, well, the privacy statement from this provider should guarantee the, uh, that they don't look through your data. 
So we are looking for cryptographic solutions to that problem of, well, uploading your data, but still, uh, uh, still enable you to execute operations on that encrypted data. So uh, the problem, as I've said, is that these providers go through your data and they extract information about you, about your usage, about your behavior. And it turns out that mining plain text data is actually not that hard. So the data mining being performed is, uh, well, relatively easy because it's uh, plain text and you can just you know, run your analyses over the plain text. And um, we think that we are on the wrong track. We think uh, we, as a community, as the uh, cryptographic or the hackers community, should actively work towards the goal of providers not being able to look through your data and to not, well, create profiles about you and to not be able to predict what you're doing next. So we will hopefully, well, thank you. So we ask the question, why you know encrypt? Why do you not, you know, uh, do put some encryption on your data before you upload it? Because uh, the encryption will save you or will save us from the dark side, you know, which performs all these analyses. In our scenario uh, that we have in mind right now when, when presenting these slides, uh, in our scenario, the user has some data, like locally, right? And uh, the user uploads their data to a third party and then forgets about the data locally because, you know, you have uploaded your massive movie library and then you're going, you know, with your mobile online and uh, you, don't know, you don't necessarily know about the full, uh, well, the full data that you have online, yet at a later point in time you want, well, to perform search, right? You want to know which files do I have, which contacts do I have without having necessarily seen that data previously on that device that you want to uh, access your data with. And um, what we will do is we will present certain schemes that allow, that allow you to perform these operations, but these uh, well schemes or these uh, technologies are not necessarily uh, plug and play, right? It's uh, not that you could drop in, say, uh, the scheme and then you're done. You need to, you know, uh, say, manage keys and uh, look at the, the rough edges of, of cryptographic schemes. We're in the science track, by the way, right? So uh, we are taking academic work and uh, we're trying to make it practical. And academic work, well, sometimes it's complicated, say, to apply for real life. So um, just keep that in mind uh, when, when listening to these, to these slides. Um, yes, we, as, as I've said, we are trying to point you into a direction. We're trying to give you some inspiration as to what to look for when, well, either implementing uh, um, encrypted search or when demanding encrypted search from your cloud provider. So let me start by a very simple scheme, a very simple encryption scheme that allows you to perform encrypted search. As an engineer, I'm trying to think about the most minimal solution, the most easy solution first, and then try to build it up to make it better and better. So my engineering ap approach to that very simple encryption scheme is to just simply encrypt all the things. Sounds simple, right? It actually is. In this scheme, we have our plain text data, and we simply encrypt each and every entry in our, of our database with a secure encryption scheme, and we upload that data to the, to the uh, third party. Simple, right? We're done. Any, any questions? So in, uh, uh, when you want to perform your operation, what you need to do is, well, you need to download all the things, right? So uh, you need to uh, ask the database on the internet, on the cloud, to give you all the entries. Then you need to decrypt locally, and well, then you have you know, the plain text, and then uh, you can perform whatever operation you want. And this scheme, well, it's very simple, right? It's uh, not, probably not what we want. Why? Because, well, if you're on your mobile, you don't want to, to uh, download your three terabyte movies library first to you know, find a file. And um, so this is not necessarily, uh, well, a good scheme for us. So we are, we are trying to build up, uh, well, solutions which perform better in, in that regard. However, I just want to point out that this, as far as I'm aware, is being implemented in a commercial product that you could buy. So uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, proxy products that, you know, uh, sell as an appliance that you put between you and, say, Gmail, 
they, as far as I am aware, they uh, will do exactly that. So the question uh, now, as, an, uh, as the engineer that I am, is can we do better? And that question I ask Christian. Christian, can we do better? Yes, we can do better. Yes, we can. Sure, we can. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Um. <laughs> We want that the cloud uh, is perform the search for us, yeah? Because uh, this looks like cloud service, and I'm not willing to perform the search on my computer, especially when I have a big data stuff on the cloud. And um, searching on encrypted data sounds a little bit like magic, but in fact, it's super simple, yeah? I show you the next scheme, a super simple scheme, how to perform uh, search on encrypted data in the cloud just by using a deterministic encryption scheme. Okay, we deterministic encryption means same plain text, same ciphertext. So we have two identical plain text, then we will have two identical ciphertext. Super easy. We can use such a scheme, AES based, to encrypt all our keywords one by one. And then we have a ciphertext collection. Okay, that's fine. And now, uh, now, oh, it's, uh, it's not working. Uh, it's broken. Oh, maybe. Sorry about that. Okay. Oh, oh that was uh, okay, uh, very yes. bad. Well, hang on. So, uh, <laughs> shall I go through this again? <laughs> anybody? Uh, did anybody not understand anything? So, uh, sorry about that. We were. Uh, here, right? Oh, that's it's the wrong button. It's, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> not just fun. Okay. Yeah. okay, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm okay. better with crypto than with computers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I will. Uh, okay, that, this, uh, that's a two button interface, right? No, there's, there's left and right. It's not working. I know. <laughs> hey, it's a. Uh, <laughs> well, we should have practiced that beforehand. Yeah, right? yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this computer thing will ever, you know, uh, we're going to succeed. It's uh, too complicated. That's here. Mm, yeah, that's yeah. the right button, yeah. No, that's Jesus. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are hacked. OK. Oh, yeah, I've, I've received a crash report. All right, that's, that's handy. There we are. Lovely. Please stop performing right. the hacks right now, eh? <laughs> OK, that's terrible. But uh, we, we're going to do it anyway. Skip the slide, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't press the button, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I press uh, the button. Just. Uh, oh. Are you serious? Next. Yeah, obviously. Next. Right, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's easy to say, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, it crashes on that very slide. That's uh, terrible. OK. So <laughs> Can you tell a joke, meanwhile? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay, Let me yeah. just uh, have this uh, finishing the pre-rendering. <coughs> no, it's not yeah, that we you know, would uh, have never you know, uh, gone through the slides with that very program. It's, of course, a random problem right now. OK. Ah, there we go. OK, now, now it's working. No, yeah, right, okay. I'm not skipping through the slide. I'm opening it directly. No, I, I'm not. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we, I have a backup plan. Don't, don't worry. That's, uh, it's all right, because uh, as an end, oh, okay, it's wrong. There we are. <laughs> right, <laughs> switching to the latex source, so it would probably be better anyway, right? Uh, there we are. Uh, <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Finally. Uh, okay. Deterministic encryption, once again, if you have same train, same plain text, means same ciphertext, so it's quite easy to search, perform a search on server side, just encrypt your keyword that they're looking for, and then for, for each ciphertext in your collection, uh, you just uh, check if, if it's a match or not, and when it's a match, it's fine. The, uh, then the keyword is part of your ciphertext collection. That's quite easy, this is uh, indeed too easy, a little bit too easy, yeah? Okay, let's, let's try it one more time. Uh, ah. <laughs> so it's working, okay. There must be a catch, yeah. Also, um, and yeah, indeed. There is there's a serious problem, yeah, because deterministic encryption is not really secure. You cannot consider this as secure. 
Because you all know the uh, example of the penguin, yeah? When you use perform deterministic, deterministic encryption, it uh, only partially uh, hides the plain text. And so we, the, uh, the now is the question, can we do better? Yeah, because this is not what we want yeah? at the end. We want to hide our data and do it well, very well, okay? And now there is uh, some idea from Song Wang and Perik. They presented this idea 2001, and it's, quite, it's worked like a charm. You just use this deterministic encryption scheme, and then you know, okay, the result is not really secure, so I have to fix something. And there is a fixing step. And what we do is just we, we, we XOR mask. A mask means a random bit string. Yeah? If I just XOR a random bit string and I have something like a one-time pet, and we all know one-time pet works like a charm, it's secure. Okay, and we can generate the mask by using a stream cyber or whatever. It's not a big problem. Okay. But then again, we have the problem when it has a secure encryption, how we can uh, perform search on the encrypted data. Okay, and, and this is uh, about the point where we lose the, the audience, right? So uh, we are... Uh, we're using the audience? <laughs> we're we're <laughs> yeah, losing okay. the audience, because now it's getting complicated. Yeah, okay. Okay, but we, so this means now we, have, we need some magic, yeah? And we cannot use any mask at all. We need a magic mask to perform this kind of encryption. Okay, and, and uh, okay, let's, let's see how we can craft such a mask. Okay, we divide the mask in the left side and the right side. And the left side, we are using random bits, yeah? We can generate these random bits once again by using a stream cipher, yeah? A boring stream cipher, but boring and secure stream cipher, no big deal. Uh, then we perform the deterministic encryption on our keywords. And then we divide this keyword in the left part and the right part, yeah? And from the left part, we derive a search key, key I, here. We, and uh, we can do this by uh, uh, using a key hash function. So you can key hash function is one. You can use HMAC, yeah? You only know the HMAC. You can perform here. You, we just here yeah, hash for left part of our search query using HMAC, and then we, ca we have our search key, yeah? And then with the left side of our mask and the search key, we craft the right side of our mask, we derive the right side. And the right side is uh, TI. The left side of our mask is SI, and the right side is TI. And now the trick is, from the, our deterministic encryption, from our interim cipher text, and the left side of the mask, we can compute the right side of the mask. And this is handy, okay? And, and now we, ex we exploit this yeah, to perform uh, search over encrypted data. Yeah. So the basic idea, once again, we can compute the right side of our mask from the left side. So this is the basic idea. And now let's uh, work with our magic mask. Let's do some magic. Uh, okay. First of all, we have to upload our stuff. We each uh, keyword or, or each uh, plain text. We have to first do perform the dynamic encryption. Then we have to uh, XOR it, the result, with our magic mask and then we upload it to the cloud, to the server. So far, so good. And now the magic starts. We want to search at some point, a time. We want to perform a search query, and then this means for a search, we a search query consists of the deterministic encryption of our keyword and the search key. So we, if each time when we perform a search query, we upload the interim cipher text and the search key. Okay, and th then the cloud can test for each uh, ciphertext from our ciphertext collection if the XOR with our deterministic ciphertext is, is a magic mask. And if so, if this is, turns out to be a magic mask, we have a hit, we have a match. And now we can figure out if, some, if, if this is part of our, of our ciphertext collection or not. So now this enables us to search over encrypted data. That works beautiful and it's fine. Uh, though the talk is done, uh, not really, there is a problem. Every blessing comes with a curse, yeah? And we have here the two curses. The first curse 
No, the scheme is not uh, super secure. It's vulnerable to statistic analysis. What does it mean? Okay, if I know maybe my target, my victim is, is uh, someone from the Wikipedia community and th the stuff here, this my target is uploading on my victim, maybe it's connected with the Wikipedia. And then I can make some estimation about the search pattern. I can make some guesses, wild guesses. And this means here, I, I guess, the uh, frequency of, of a search. Yeah? And then here, uh, large font means uh, high frequency, and small size means low frequency, and there I can make estimation. And then, what next, I monitor the user behavior, yeah? And this means I monitor the search, query, search queries, yeah? And then, after a while, I can make, uh, I can compare my, my guess with what I've uh, monitored, and then here, see, oh, this guy looked a lot for uh, uh, 0x94 uh, uh, and so on, E7, blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's a good chance that this uh, that he searched for, Wiki this might be the, the ciphertext for, Wiki uh, the, the, the deterministic ciphertext for Wikipedia or Foundation 1 or Foundation or so on, yeah? And and my target only looked twice for the small cipher text, O, X, uh, D, uh, 8, V, 9, so on. So this uh, must be one of a, a, a smaller stuff here on the right side, uh, like uh, I've got a least license or whatever. So, and this is how I can partially reconstruct the cipher text. So yeah, this is a problem. If you, if you perform a lot of search queries, you can decrypt parts of the ciphertext. And yeah, this can become a problem. Okay? And then there is the next problem, speed. Okay, this is, we've used uh, symmetric encryption. It's not so bad than using full homomorphic encryption or so. And okay, first of all, I have here, I, I implemented the stuff. And uh, this is uh, some performance benchmarks. And first of all, you see, oh, the ciphertext is about six times larger than the plain text. What happened? Um, I padded each word to 32 bytes before I encrypt it. So this padding is uh, crucial because when you uh, encrypt uh, natural language stuff, words, uh, you can see from the side, it, and, and then you reveal a lot of information. Yeah, if, if, you, if, you, if you encrypt uh, yes and no, and then I look on the cipher text, without petting, and I look on the cipher text, the cipher text of yes should be longer than the cipher text of no. And then I, from the cipher text, I can learn a lot about the length of the cipher text, I can, I can learn a lot about the plain text. And this is why I just padded each and any word to 32 bytes, and then performed the encryption. Okay, this, yeah. Okay, this is a fact. It depends on, on what you encrypt. Okay, and the other thing is uh, time to encrypt. Okay, this is quite fast because I, uh, I used a, a AS and with uh, the AS native instruction stuff from Intel, so it's quite fast. And, and this is uh, only, I measured all, only stuff on a single core mesh, on a normal or regular notebook, on a single core. Oh, this is okay. -ish. And the search, yeah, okay, the search might be a problem because you need, need linear time, yeah? For each and any word, a search query, I have to go to each entry of my ciphertext collection and check if it's a match or not. And when I perform big data, or huge, large data, huge data, this means uh, I have to wait a couple of minutes. It's quite good if, if you like to drink coffee a lot, yeah, and you can make coffee breaks, but, but uh, this is not what you really want wait a couple of minutes before you have a search result. Okay, what can we do better? Can we optimize the search time? And then what we can do, okay, we can look, what do the uh, guys, uh, the, the database guys, or the uh, operating system guys, they have a lot of data, and they have to uh, search quick. And they uh, using indexes, or using an index. And okay, Let's use an index, so to so speed up the things. Okay, then once again, you can here have 
the most simple stuff is to have a plain text index on your client device. Yeah, great. And and then and the plain text you encrypt it using a, you can encrypt the, uh, the plain text using a secure encryption scheme, your favorite secure encryption scheme. Just uh, encrypt it and upload it to the cloud. Everything is fine, and your ink text is on a local device. Yeah, nowadays you have uh, your smartphone, your tablet, your notebook, your PC, your server, your other server, and five or fifty thousand bots. It becomes uh, quite a mess when you when try to synchronize stuff, the index on the client side. <laughs> yeah. Some guys know what, what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it uh, will not work. So. Yeah, OK, next approach. Let's encrypt the index and upload it to the server. OK, you can do that. Just encrypt it as whole with a secure encryption scheme. And then on demand, you can download the index, the up-to-date index, and can perform your encryption on the index. Yeah, well, if, the, when, if you're doing uh, if big data again, your index can become a couple of, hundred, a couple of hundred megabytes, maybe. And this makes no fun to download at all, especially when you are at the countryside in Germany, where you have a DSL light or something, it makes no fun at all. So I want to have uh, my index now and not in 10 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever. This is, not, this is a bad user experience, yeah? We want to have a nice user experience. OK, then to achieve this, we need a little bit uh, advanced crypto uh, stuff. OK, here, first of all, we have to generate a special index that fits our purpose. And how we can do this? Therefore, we need a search key and the index key. And for this example, we want to generate an index for the last name. We have uh, user data, and we want to here search for last names. And then for each last name, we generate a search key and the index key. And then with a search key, we just hash zero, and this is our search token. So we derive from zero and the search key and then the key hash function, our search token. So, and then with the index key, we just securely encrypt the row IDs in this example. Yeah? Quite fine. And this works. So if we want to perform a search, we just uh, upload, perform a search query by just uploading the search key and the index key for our <coughs> for our last name, and then the cloud can perform a lookup in the index. Then, it, when it gets a hit, it decrypts the index and sends us the result. Oh, this is quite impressive. Okay, there is a problem, yeah, because if you have a very common uh, last name, like Smith or Müller, you will have a uh, lot of uh, uh, well, we have a lot of, of hits, a lot of uh, row values uh, that, that, that fits, a lot of row IDs. You have a huge set of row IDs that, f that match for uh, Smith, people with the last name Smith, and therefore the size of the value for Smith is larger than the size of the value for, for example, Forla, because Forla is widely, un widely uncommon. So it's an uncommon name. So you can, if, if, if you get access to this index, you, you can, uh, from the size of a value, you can, you can try to uh, partial, to, to, to estimate the plain text of the last name from just looking at the si value size. And this is a problem. Yeah, we, we have to hide the size. So number of occurrences, the frequency of, 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 last, of the last name. Yeah? If not, we have a bad time uh, because, because we want that uh, we want to be able to, to lose our uh, our index without uh, get. Uh, if yes, we want to give the, the, the our adversary the index without becoming trouble. So yeah, this is the whole idea. If if the, if if if, yes, if 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 our assumption is that the adversary has never ever access 
to the our index, we don't need to encrypt our index. Yeah. Okay. So and then we assume that our adversary has access to our index, and even if he has access, his the index would not reveal any information about our plain text. Therefore, we have to hide the size. Okay. And, and there's a cool idea from Cash et al. from last year. They published a paper how to hide the size. And this is by flatten out the index. Quite cool idea. For, okay, therefore, we have to remember the occurrences of a last name. Okay, we we'll start here. And if, uh, here, if, if the first row, we have here Alice Fu, this means last name Fu. We, okay, let's make an entry for Fu, and the occurrence is zero. This means we hash here zero, and then encrypt the row ID here one. Okay, then next we have Bob Fu, same last name. That last name occurred once before, so now we hash one instead of zero. Okay. And sure, the value is the, the row ID. And then we have Eve bar, and then bar occurrence so far none. Then again, we hash just zero under the new search key for bar. Uh, okay, and then we encrypt the uh, the value, the row ID, and now we see we encrypt for each and any entry of our in index only one row ID. Yeah. So the, we align the size. The, only, the size is always the same. And this means our adversary sees not so much anymore. If we get access, just a bunch of random values. OK. And once again, how this works in reality, just you, you encrypt your plain text using your favorite super secure encryption scheme and upload it. And then you uh, generate your index and upload the index. Okay, and now it's we can the, the, the cloud can now have the capability to search over an encrypted data. Yeah, here once again for each search query we compute the search key and the index key, upload it to the cloud, and now the cloud can make lookups in the index. First, we, we start by making lookup for zero. Yeah, we have a hit. Okay, then let's try one. Hit again. Yeah, let's try two. No hit. Oh, it's over. Then for our hits, we decrypt uh, just the values and send them the result to the client. Yeah, and, and this works like a charm. So it's okay. I, I once again I used the same plain text. It's just the King James Bible. Whatever. Okay, and because I use the King James Bible because a lot of other researchers are doing it, and it contains a lot of keywords, a lot of words. It's about 800,000 words, so it's it's quite okay, okay. -ish. And here I, I, I didn't care about the uh, padding. I used it as a blob, as a binary blob, the entire King James Bible. This, this, this is why the cybertext is uh, equal length than the plain text. Depending on your scenario, you have to do some padding, so it's most likely the cybertext is larger than your plain text. That's okay. Okay, but uh, the index size you see here, it's, it's okay-ish. Uh, depending on your, uh, on, on your plain text, you need about uh, 32 bytes for each entry. So 16 bytes for the search token and 60 bytes to encrypt the value, the row ID. Yeah, and 60 bytes for each entry might be okay, de depending on your scenario. But the cool thing now is we can perform search in, in, uh, in constant time, more or less. So it's, it's, I make a lot of uh, tests, and it was all, all, all the results I got was uh, my search, the answer of the search query was less than one millisecond. And less than one millisecond is, uh, is quite good. So it's, 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 it's working. You know, it's, and the speed is fine. And yeah, so uh, this is everything. It's the sunshine and rainbows. And uh, not really. 
Yeah, again, we have the problem with uh, our statistic and analysis. Because we f the, the search key and the index key are the same for, for when, when I have multiple queries for the same last name. So when I search 20 times for, this, uh, for, for the same last name, I have 20 times the same search query. And yeah, OK, there are techniques how I get rid of those, but then the performance, the performance, performance breakdown. Then you have usually wait uh, a couple of hours or, or minutes, or your, or your cipher text size explodes. So, yeah. And if you want to make it practical, then, yeah, till now you have to live with this statistical analysis. Maybe we get rid of those in, in the future. Depends. OK, and now uh, Toby will conclude the talk and give outlook what's going on in the future. Thank you very much, Christian. <laughs> So that was um, fascinating, isn't it? So the, um, you enable a third party to execute a search operation on encrypted data, although you know, you've know you encrypted the data. How could anyone possibly execute any operations, uh, any operation on that encrypted data? But it's possible. And um, these were just a couple of schemes that we've presented, and uh, which were those that we've implemented. And um, there's many more. And um, uh, from what we've shown you, these schemes have the problem of the deterministic search token. So whenever you query two times for the same token or for the same uh, keyword, then you will generate the same token, and the database or the, the service provider might uh, very well interfere what you are searching for, based only on, on your uh, queries, based only on your, on your token. And um, there's attempts to, um, or there, there's other techniques to, uh, well, deal with the problem, but um, making those practical is a major challenge uh, currently. Fully homomorphic encryption has been, you know, um, on everyone's uh, mind for the last couple of years, and there's uh, massive research efforts going on uh, right now. But um, for now, you could not use that because it's simply too. Um, well, too demanding in terms of performance, computation, also memory. So this is not an option, but if you, if you happen to have a few spare cycles, you may very well enter this area of research and uh, try to find solutions, um, well, to, to these problems. We have seen um, <coughs> that we've implemented those schemes, and there's many more. And again, if you have a, a, a few spare cycles, but rather want to hack instead of research, then go, go off, read these papers, and build libraries for, uh, for encrypted search. Build libraries so that uh, service providers can use these libraries and offer encrypted services. Ideally, we'd have a collaborative effort to demand encrypted services and to write these uh, programs, these libraries, for third parties to offer these services. We will not kick off the new Let's Encrypt initiative. But uh, we will hopefully, well, inspire some of you to um, go into that direction and to make, uh, well, to, to bring more encryption to the internet, to the cloud. We have um, seen a couple of schemes. We have seen the very first deterministic keyword encryption scheme. It's very easy to set up. And you can do that, well, with low computational effort on your, well, end machine. The search, however, does not perform very well. Uh, in terms of security. We have seen a, well, uh, probably better uh, scheme in that regard. We uh, can search over the size of the database because the server has to, uh, well, go through each and every entry in the, in the database. That may uh, or may not be what you want. If you don't want to have such a scheme, you may want to look into the cache et al scheme. You can search in basically no time because you have the index, and if you store the index cleverly, then well, if you make it a hash table or something, then you can search an O of one and uh, O of one. However, well, index. Whenever you have an index, you need to think uh, about what happens when you add new entries, when you delete entries, when you change entries. So this, uh, well, if you are going the cache at all route, then uh, keep that in mind. There's uh, many schemes, as I've said already. All of them have different, slightly different features. So depending on what you actually want, 
you can build a very efficient team. So if you, well, cut down on the functionality that you expect from your, from your scheme, then, uh, well, uh, by doing some clever engineering, you can cut down on uh, runtime and memory uh, demands uh, significantly. So um, if you are about to build a scheme, think about what your actual uh, requirements are. And um, as I said, many more exist. If you uh, research, if you do some research on the internet, uh, search for real encryption, that term will find you, um, well, quite a few academic papers on that, um, on that topic. You will also find a couple of libraries. There's already software implementations available. In, uh, I haven't evaluated them all, but, um, well, uh, some need work, let's put it that way. So, um, again, if you have some spare cycles, go and look at these libraries and provide patches, uh, make them work, make them actually built in first place, that would be good, and, um, so that we can uh, have nice things in the future. And um, as we've hopefully presented, searching of encrypted data is practical. You can build your encrypted database. You can have clients that search over encrypted data without, well, the server, the server side learning either the plain text nor like uh, the key nor what you were what you were searching for directly at least. So, um, uh, whenever someone or when, whenever you are in, in, in a discussion about whether such a thing is possible now, you hopefully know that this e is possible and we should use that. And with that, we'd like to conclude, and uh, we'd like to thank you very much for your attention. Again, before I forget it, uh, we will be at the bar in like uh, at, 40, uh, at uh, quarter to uh, one or whatever it is, so just right after the talk. Thank you very much. So let's go over to Q&A. We'll still have plenty of time left. Please, if you leave the room now, do so quietly, because we want to actually hear what is, what is being asked into the microphones. So please do it quietly and take all the trash with you. So now, let's start. Microphone over there, please. Hi. Um, in Philip Rogaway's uh, very good paper, The Moral Character of Cryptography, he right. writes, in critique of FHE. Providing strong funding for FHE and IO provides risk-free political cover. It supports the storyline that cloud storage and computing is safe. It helps entrench favored values within the cryptographic community, speculative theory-centric directions, and it helps keep harmless academics who could, if they got pasty, start to innovate in more sensitive directions. So I read this as a critique of that this work sucks into good cryptography work into an area where you can actually do better work somewhere else. What are your thoughts on this? Right, that's a very interesting paper, by the way. If you have a couple of, uh, well, if you have a couple of hours, uh, you should go off and read the, uh, it's a couple of weeks uh, old, right? Like yeah. three weeks, maybe. And um, the paper in, a, in and of itself is, uh, well, as you said, criticizing the uh, crypto people for being, well, way off uh, the real world, essentially, right? That's, that's uh, the bottom line that I took away. And um, rightfully, the full homomorphic, uh, well, say, string of research, well, is complicated in the sense that it's, say, very demanding, at least. Um, and uh, I, I think it's perfectly right, and I think we should focus, we as the community should focus on making real world things happen and enabling uh, these techniques that we have like for real world usage, for usage in such a context such that you could actually upload your contacts and still, well, perform your queries over the encrypted data. So I, I sympathize with that uh, paper like to, to the full extent possible to the, uh, and, uh, I, again, I, I encourage everyone to read that paper. And I, I hope that we don't fall into that category of uh, good crypto as, as uh, DJB called it, I think. I, I hope this is, uh, becoming um, boring crypto in the sense that this is a commodity that you can use it just like that. Thank you. And everybody, read the paper. <laughs> yeah. And oh, as we are on papers, um, before you forget, for mm -hmm. completeness sake, these are the references in case you want to go off and read uh, these papers yourself. So you will find them anyway. Uh, is there a question from the internet? Yes, I have two questions. The first one is, can you compare this scheme with Iron Goldberg's private information retrieval? Uh, Okay, I'm not a super expert at uh, information retrieval topic, but 
I think there it's just I think it's just almost practical, and I think the stuff we present is indeed practical. So with, with the index stuff, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, usually when you have um, yeah you, you, when you use this uh, uh, these other techniques, it's uh, you, you have problems with uh, with uh, um, the cipher text with the length of the search query or the index size, or you have uh, problems with the complexity. So. It, it will, this private information retrieval might not work as well in practice with big data as you think it will be. There are scaling problems. So for small stuff, it might be fine, but on large scale, I think it's, it, it, it's very but challenging. And yeah. And also, a private information retrieval solves a different purpose, right? With private information retrieval, you will download something from the server or the server network without the server or the server network learning what you're downloading. This is different from performing search operations over encrypted data. Okay. Uh, yeah, here, uh, the, the, the schemes we present, the, the database is learning, of the server's learning, which, which rows or so on exist. Yeah, if, if, if you hide this, it, it will come with a, with a coast. Uh, it, 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 it will be costly and yeah, I don't think that you can implement it now on each and any database and, and it will run smoothly. I think there is a lot of work to do. But this is my opinion. Well. Next question on the microphone, please. Uh, hello. Um, hi. Oh, hi. I have a light on me, so. Oh, over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one problem that I potentially see in this, and so you mentioned that you pad each word to have the same length, kind of, yep. so that you can't an analyze the word length. Um, that's good. There's one other issue in that there's, uh, I don't know if you've uh, heard of the distributional hypothesis, but basically the co-location of words within large sets of text kind of defines the semantics of the word themselves. Yep. So. Just by, if I get access to your encrypted data, um, looking at how encrypted words occur with each other and knowing that, okay, this might be English or even without knowing the language potentially, I could kind of reverse engineer what specific words might be just by the fact that they occur together or how often they, you know, those words again occur um, compared to other ones. So you can kind of cluster them um, and there's a lot of research that's going on in deep learning on you know, this word vector modeling basically. Uh, and the thing there is word vector modeling works even if you don't look at the surface form of the word, like the, the actual letters. So I don't know if you've uh, gone into this a lot in your research at all, but uh, it's a potential <laughs> vulnerability that if you encrypt your data word by word, just the fact that each word is still the same token uh, makes them vulnerable to being yeah, reverse engineered, yep. sort of. Yeah, yeah, totally right, yeah, that, that is, this, is, this is a problem. But, but uh, okay, I want to emphasize once again, it's, it's much better than upload to the plain text stuff. So, yeah? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now sure. we upload plain text and yeah. recover plain text from plain text is not challenging at all. <laughs> so uh, you ha even if you perform such uh, stuff, it, 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 it will cost the, it will cost it's costly and you have to do, um, you, you have to be evil, yeah? <laughs> so really you have to, uh, now, now you can just uh, look on the data. Now, then, with our schemes, you have to, you have to mount an active attack. And I think it's it, it's yeah, it's it's uh, it's much better than uploading. Yeah, there are problems. Okay, it's it's it. it I, I, I told you it's, it's not a f maybe not the final, not the best solution, but uh, we should. I think we should now shift to upload encrypted data, even if you can partially decrypt thing. It with, with, uh, if, if you perform a lot of um, amount of stuff, of uh, computation, yeah. It still makes it harder to analyze your encrypted yeah. data. Sure. So it, I think it's super hard to decrypt all the data. It partially, okay, but it's better than uploading plain text, yeah. Okay, thanks. Please come to the front to pick up your suites for having asked any questions. Next question, now in the middle aisle, please. Uh, hello, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, I was quite uh, pleasantly Mm. Uh, interested to see uh, 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 this uh, talk sponsored by a company who was started uh, by a person from the Chinese uh, National Army or People's Army. Um, so kudos to that, that they are sponsoring such kind of uh, 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 research. Uh, the question I have is uh, the new anti-terror laws in China, how do they affect uh, 
um, this kind of research, basically you need to either uh, build in a backdoor or have the keys sent to China. So um, can you in your uh, working life use this uh, in Huawei or uh, is it not possible because you need to have the backdoor built in? Yes. I don't know. It's a, uh, I've, I'm not concerned with any of that. Okay. Maybe you should look into it. Good. <laughs> Is there a question from the internet? Yes, I have one more question. Um, what about context? Like normal search gives you context in the result or can um, consider the context when doing search? What, uh, what's your approach to this? Difficult, you mean uh, context in the sense that in the morning, like the time maybe or the, the place where you're querying from, is that? No, just uh, the, the words that are around the, um, the thing you're looking for. So mm. some hits might be more relevant to the search performed than others, despite having the same keyword. Yeah, once again, yeah, you can, this might be a problem. Yeah, right. We have no practical solution yet. But once again, it's better than uploading your plain text. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this for, uh, I recommend to encrypt it, use this techniques, and you will have uh, the, 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 the adversary, the agencies will have much harder time than now than just looking at the plain text. So, uh, yeah. So, um, and you can, make, yeah, you can say, yeah, there is this problem, this problem, so don't use it. But don't use it means you upload stuff in plain text. And then you, you, the agencies, the military is super happy if you upload plain text. So you make the, the job more difficult if you perform encryption. Next question at the middle, middle aisle, please. Are you aware of uh, any schemes to also offload the index calculation to the provider and work on encrypted data? Whether we are aware of index schemes that offload the index calculation as index such, calculation. Uh, I understood okay. your mm -hmm. scheme uh, that ah. the client is doing the index calculation. Uh, now, uh, if the index yeah. is to be calculated by the server, is that possible too? Okay, it's, it's much easier to, come to create the index when you know the plain text. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's something you thought about searching too in the beginning. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I'm not aware of a practical scheme, but yeah, there may might be if an, a scheme, but I'm not aware of any. Yeah, okay, I don't thank know. You. Next question now on this side in the middle aisle, please. Thank you for your great talk. Uh, I was wondering, are there any approaches to do a little bit more complicated queries, like get all the people in your database that are older than 30, for example? <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, it, it's... it's <laughs> yes, but no, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, th there are schemes, right? Th there are uh, schemes to, uh, well, for example, uh, order your entries, you know. Uh, you can encrypt in a clever way such that you could still order them by ciphertext and you would have them ordered, you know, if you decrypted them, then you would still have, you know, the, the very same order in plain text. But um, it's difficult because um, some people might not necessarily consider that to be, well, as secure as you would like to be, you know. if, 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 you, if you make order preserving really secure, you have exponential size in ciphertext. Yeah. It, it's not practical. So, yeah, you, you, can, you can make it better to, I mean, if you sacrifice some uh, security, but yeah, there are some schemes. But yeah, I've, I've, yeah right now uh, we, we make some, we, we have made some analysis and stuff and, and tests, but uh, it, it's not as easy as uh, the schemes I, I showed you. Yeah. <laughs> you. You can do it, but it's much more tricky and hairy. So, yeah. You have to consult your, your, a lot of crypto people to achieve this. Next question, please, on that side. You have presented two ways for implementing index-based uh, uh, searchable encryption, one with the just encrypted, line-wise encrypted index, and one where you additionally hide the length of the index. Do you think it's a worthwhile 
step to put the additional effort into the second solution since each time you're searching, you're basically disclosing the relationship of those rows since you will be sending like a bunch of search requests. And if you just search them one by one, you will also get a lot of latency and you get a lot of additional network overhead. So is it worth it? Depends on your needs, I guess. I mean, the, in the first scenario where you don't hide the length, you're, say, vulnerable against an attacker stealing your hard disk, your database, because then you can run the analyses on you know, the size of the, the index values. You don't have that in the second scheme where you hide the length. So if that's you know, of your concern, then, well, you better go for the hiding one instead of the cheaper one, say. Yep. Again, if, if, you, if you know your requirements, you can engineer your scheme such that it performs very well. Do you know how much information this leaks? It just totally depends on your plain text struct, on the structure of your plain text. Yeah. Right, yeah. And also, it's um, a difficult subject matter um, the, to define the leakage. That state of current discussions uh, among cryptographers, what does leakage actually mean? Thank you. Thank you. Pick up your sweets. There is still s was someone standing there, please. Um, yeah, so for the, for the scenario you briefly mentioned, like I have a three, three terabyte offloaded data and I want to search it, um, I, th I see that it makes a lot of sense to cooperate with the cloud provider and make them search. Um, but I'm sort of wondering what the break even is because if I have way less data, let's say, I don't know, just a few gigabytes, like many of us probably have, um, it might also make sense to just um, compute the index on my side, upload the index somewhere I know, and then downloading just the index, which is way smaller than my actual data, and then use that. So have you looked into um, at which point of, of volume of data um, does it start to make sense to employ a solution like that? Because I think that most people just have a few gigabytes, and for a few gigabytes I don't, I, I think it's faster to just download the index, search, and then download the specific part of the encrypted data I want. So where do, when does it start to pay off? Um, no, we didn't look into that because we want to uh, build a cloud service that's searching for the stuff. So we're interested in, 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 in implementing a cloud service uh, that can perform search over encrypted data. Therefore, we have not looked uh, uh, at, at, at the solution. A little bit out of scope of our research. We still have time for one last question. Please go ahead. Hi, have you um, ever thought about tokenizing uh, all your texts before you uh, encrypt them? Because a, a tokenized list doesn't uh, change so much. You can uh, keep it on your uh, devices. It will, would also defeat uh, frequency analysis. Uh, and the encrypted uh, data would be a lot smaller as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> you're right, yeah. You can, you can do it this way, yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> so as it seems there are no questions left, what about the internet? No, the internet is quiet. So, Tobias Müller, Christian Follow, thank you very much for your talk. Thank you. Please yeah, give thank them you. a round of applause.